Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another case fan optimization video for you here on the channel today. This is actually the second in a two part series looking at how you can get the best performance out of your case fans. In the first part of this series, I looked at P12 fans from Arctic. I had up to six mounted in my chassis. I've got a couple right here. And if you're interested in 120 millimeter fans specifically, take a look at the video that I'm linking up right here because that's where I go over all the data for 120 millimeter fans. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the five 140 millimeter fans I have in the chassis right now. They are P14 fans from Arctic, exact same design, just gone up a size versus the P12s here. So it's a really interesting comparison. All the testing was done in this Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX chassis with a FUMA 2 cooler on top of a Ryzen 9 3900X CPU. And then I've got my EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 down here. Now, both the CPU cooler and the GPU cooler fans were set at a fixed RPM to take them out of the equation, but I couldn't run them at zero. That simply wouldn't work when the system was under load. So they were set at around 50 to 60% on the PWM scale. Now, in terms of what you're gonna find in the benchmarks, look, it's partially gonna be based on my test setup. And so it's not gonna necessarily translate to your system, but there are some universal truths that I think we'll be able to pull from the data once we look over it. Before we get into that, a couple of caveats. First of all, I did do decibel normalized testing again in this video, but as with my last video, there is a major limitation to that. And that is when I'm running five or six fans in a chassis, I can't tune each one and then target 35 decibels for the whole system. What I had to do to hit 35 decibels tested at two feet like I did was to change the RPM of all those fans in unison. So I went from say 1000 to the maximum. This is actually going to be 1600 RPM for these fans. For these fans, it was 1900 RPM. So up and down the RPM range, but in unison, because for me to individually tune each fan would take hours per setup. And I was testing a huge range of setups from two fans to actually six fans in this video. So I just did it based on a set RPM for all the fans. Now, of course, there are ways you can optimize that. And maybe sometime in the distant future, I will do another video where I actually take one scenario, maybe four fans, and I try to find the exact right RPM for each of those fans. But honestly, that's going to be so fact dependent based on the system you're running that it may not be useful to anyone but me. Now, the other caveat I do want to talk about is the noise produced by these fans. I did find in my previous video that the P12s did cause a little bit of harmonic resonance at certain RPMs, really a range that wasn't at the highest RPM, but somewhere in the middle. Like for me, it was around 1400 RPM. Other people have reported this phenomenon at different RPMs. And I did report that to Arctic. I think it has to do with the fan just vibrating at the right level to trigger something in the case and make it vibrate and really cause a high pitch noise. It's very irritating to the human ear, but isn't particularly loud, but you definitely notice it. Now in this test with my P14 fans that I have mounted in here right now, I didn't have any of that in my testing and I tested all the RPMs up to 1600 RPM, which is the maximum. But I did notice something else, a different phenomenon that you have to watch out for, and that is turbulence. At certain RPMs with a certain number of fans in the chassis, and particularly these very high powered 140 millimeter fans, I experienced kind of a beating, like a rhythmic beating every five seconds or so, kind of like a bass drum or like the thump of a subwoofer totally different from the harmonic resonance that these cause. I don't think it's actually a problem with the fans at all. I just think it's a fact of life when you're dealing with airflow through a chassis and you're pushing a lot of air in different directions at different speeds. So I just wanna be frank with you. There are certain RPMs that regardless of the fans you're using, you're probably not gonna to want to target that RPM range because it just produces strange results. So with all that said, let's take a closer look at this test setup and then I'll give you the benchmarks. Out of the box, the Pure Base 500DX from Be Quiet includes three 140 millimeter fans, but I stripped them out of the case and prepared it for installation of the Arctic P-Series fans. My first set of tests used these six P12 fans. They are 120 millimeter. And then in my second set of tests, which is the focus of this video, I used these five 140 millimeter fans. I also ran a set of benchmarks on a hybrid setup with three 120s in the front and three 140s in the rear. 
plus this setup with a front top 140 flipped as an intake based on viewer requests. Now, some people propose to me, well, why don't you test three 140s in the front and three 120s on top and one in the rear? Well, that of course would require a much larger chassis. And I do have some chassis in my collection here that would fit that many fans. But you have to consider that when you go to a larger chassis, they can fit all those fans. You're also creating a lot more dead space between the fans and your components. So while I haven't tested it directly, my guess is that just going to a larger case that can fit more fans isn't necessarily going to get you better results. It actually may get you worse results. My benchmarks were run with a real world setup of the desktop PC next to my desk and the microphone set at two feet away diagonally and at about shoulder level. I won't be posting idle benchmarks because these fans spin down to 200 RPM, which makes them silent regardless of the number in your case, as you can hear in this sample. When running at their maximum RPM of 1600, however, they are quite loud. Moving on to the benchmarks, there's a lot to discuss here because I'm combining data from my previous 120 millimeter fan tests with data from the 140 millimeter fan test. And I'm actually running them through several different benchmarks under two different test conditions, max RPM and decibel normalize. Let's start with the simplest. This is Cinebench R20 running a five minute loop with a maximum RPM set. So there's nothing subjective here at all. And I'm using two to four fan setups and they're all identical and they're pretty traditional. So like one front, one rear or two front, one rear. These are gonna be directly comparable. So you get a sense of how 120 and 140 millimeter fans compare at maximum RPM. And as we can see, actually the 120 start out ahead when you have just two of them in the system, probably because they're running at higher RPM. But once we get into the three fan and four fan setups, the 140 millimeter fans definitely pull ahead, but they're also quite a bit louder. Also note that in the CPU intensive benchmark, when you have three 140 millimeter fans, you want one of those on top. It's much better than having two in the front. That's gonna change when we get into the gaming benchmark though. Moving on to the decibel normalized results, the 140 millimeter fans here fall behind or at best tie the 120 millimeter fans. And that's partly because they have to run so much slower to hit the same decibel level. Now let's move on to the gaming tests here. I dropped the VRM temp, which really didn't change much in 3D Mark and add GPU and chipset temps, as well as a CPU GPU average, which is gonna be interesting for gamers out there. At maximum RPM, the 140 millimeter fans do pull ahead, at least if you have more than two of them in your system. And take note how incredibly different the two three fan setups are with the 140 millimeter fans. You either have to prioritize CPU temps or GPU temps. But one deciding factor here may be the additional noise of adding one of these fans to the top of the chassis. Now looking at the decibel normalized test, the 140 millimeter fans definitely pull away, at least when you're using two front, one rear, or two front, one rear, one top. There's a lot of heat in the system more than in Cinebench R20. Although at this point, it's abundantly clear that having 240 millimeter fans is totally suboptimal. If you're gonna go with these bigger fans, you need at least three in the system to take advantage of their power. At this point, we're gonna switch gears and bring in the big guns. For the 120 millimeter fans, I'm just testing the five and six fan setups. And for the 140 millimeter fans, I'm testing a wide range of setups, including some five fan and six fan setups. That six fan setup on the right side of the graph is a combo with 120 millimeter fans in the front and 140 millimeter fans in the rear and top. And what you'll see if you take a close look at this data is that in this CPU test that only heats up the CPU and the VRMs, adding additional fans at a certain point becomes counterproductive. The best result here is arguably when using 440 millimeter fans, two front, one rear, one top, although it is a little bit louder than the six fan 120 millimeter setup. Also of note, there is no benefit to flipping that front top fan. And when we get into the gaming benchmarks, it's gonna become even more obvious. Turning to the decibel normalized results, we see more evidence that adding additional fans is counterproductive. So if you are running applications that only tax your CPU and your VRMs, you wanna limit yourself to either five 120 millimeter fans or four 140 millimeter fans. Now let's turn to the gaming benchmarks. Again, starting with the maximum RPM test, 1900 RPM on those 120s, 1600 RPM on the 140s, we see that there's one clear winner, six by 120. This is actually pretty surprising. Even the combo of three 120s in front and three 140s in the top and rear 
wasn't quite as good despite being much louder. But in particular, the setup with 5140s with the front top fan flipped as an intake was completely laughable. These results were so bad, I'm gonna drop them from the next graph, which is gonna look at decibel normalized results. By the way, in these graphs, I did add in the 4x120 setup with three in the front and one in the rear because I thought it was a really interesting counterpoint to some of the 140 millimeter fan setups. That kind of setup, which is very typical in a lot of mid-range and high-end cases these days, is actually really good for GPU temps, but not quite as good for CPU temps. Now let's take a look at those decibel normalized results. To be honest, I was hoping the 140 millimeter fans would redeem themselves here, but the previous graph was a warning sign that they do have an issue when you start adding a lot of them to a case. The airflow to noise ratio is only so-so. Now in my earlier tests with just two and three of these 140 millimeter fans, decibel normalized, they were actually quite good beating out the 120 millimeter fans that didn't occur this time around. Again, we see the best result is six by 120. The only result that was equivalent was having three 140s in the top and rear, but three 120s in the front. And what this proves is if you're running a hot GPU like the RTX 3080 that I used, you really need more airflow to the lower front corner of your case, even if it's not obvious that's gonna help. It seems like that's gonna go under the PSU shroud, but the overall results prove otherwise. Now, I actually intentionally lined up the lower 140 fan at the level of the PSU shroud thinking that this would be advantageous. If I were to do this all over again, or if I were to give you advice on how to keep your GPU cool with 140 millimeter fans in the front, I would suggest you think about lowering them below the shroud and then perhaps separate them out. So one of them is really focused only on the GPU and then there's a higher fan focused on the CPU. All right, what can I say? Those results were really surprising and really interesting. And some of the theories that I held going into this testing were completely wrong. Some of the theories you guys held going into the testing were also completely wrong, specifically one that a lot of people wanted me to test. And I was really interested in that is, what happens when you flip this top front fan? Folks proposed to me that if you had it in the standard configuration as an exhaust, it would pull cool air right from that front fan and out of the chassis before it did any good for your components. Well, as it turns out, that's just wrong. Flipping the top fan just set up a fight with the GPU's own cooler. That GPU is putting off a ton of heat and pushing it up. When you pushed it back down, it made the GPU basically soak in its own heat. And I got some of the worst results for my GPU temps in that scenario, even though I had five fans in the chassis, it was much worse than some of the setups with far fewer fans. The other thing that was really surprising to me is that you can't generalize and say that 140 millimeter fans are better than 120 millimeter fans. I tested the P12 and P14 from Arctic specifically because they are so similar. One is just a larger version of the other. But what I found was that those bigger fans definitely generate a lot more noise, even at much lower RPMs. So for instance, at the maximum 1600 RPM, they were much louder than the P12s at 1900 RPM. So you really had to use them wisely to get the most out of them. And when I did decibel normalize the results and backed it way off of that maximum RPM of 1600, they actually performed quite a bit better. But you have to be careful. When you run a big fan at high speed, it generates a lot of noise and perhaps doesn't get you the performance level that you might expect from all of that noise. Now, in terms of the best setups, I'd say that there are a couple. Number one, you definitely want to maximize the number of fans in the front of your chassis if you have a high power GPU. Now, the other thing that I thought was really interesting was what happens when you put a top fan up here as an exhaust. Fans up top in a mesh chassis like this, be quiet, I'll show you what this looks like. There's nothing blocking that noise. This is the mesh on top of this chassis. And from the user's perspective, those top fans generate the most noise that hits your eardrums, as opposed to the very same fans running at the very same RPM in the front or the rear of the chassis. Now, ultimately, I did find that having even more fans is better, but you do have to be careful with it. It's kind of a toss up between the six 120s and the five 140s. Overall, actually, the six 120s were slightly better because they performed on par temperature wise, but they were quieter. And when I decibel normalized those results, the 120s were still just a little bit better.
In fact, even dropping down to 5120s was better than 5140s. And because they're available in a value price five pack, you can jump into this testing without worrying about wasting a lot of money on a couple of fans you may not use. In fact, if you don't utilize all five fans in your case, you can always repurpose them for something like a CPU cooler or a liquid cooling radiator on which I found them to perform amazingly well. In fact, they are the all around best fans I've ever tested. With that said, they aren't actually the best case fans I've tested. That honor goes to the Sykes Kaza Flex. 120 and 140 millimeter fans. Unfortunately, ever since I crowned the 140 millimeter Kaza Flex the best case fan ever, it's been completely unavailable all around the world. And a lot of people have commented on my video that I posted in August 2020 on this topic and said, you know, these fans aren't available in my country. Do they even exist? Well, yes, they exist, but Scythe has a lot of trouble keeping up with demand. They're not a big company. And frankly, for this video, I decided I just wasn't gonna mess with that. I didn't want to talk about fans that you couldn't go out and buy, as opposed to the P12 and P14, which on most days you actually can find in stock. The value packs sell pretty well though, so if you find one in stock at a good price, jump on it. If you have any questions or comments about this video, definitely post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. And even more than that, share this content with your network. Wherever you're a frequent contributor or participant, tell them about this content. Tell them it's worth watching. This is relatively niche. I'm not reviewing a brand new product. This isn't something people are searching for feverishly. In fact, a lot of people probably don't even know to ask about this topic but it's one worth exploring. So with your help, a lot more people will learn about this and hopefully in the future, there'll be plenty more videos on this topic, not just from me, but from other YouTubers who want to explore the best ways to optimize your PC. Now, as always, I am Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I will catch you next time.